All right, now let's look back at Revelation chapter 8. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. So now an angel is flying through the middle of heaven. Saying with a loud voice so that everyone can hear, Woe, woe, woe. Sam Jones once said, when God says woe, that means stop, man. You better watch out. Three times God said that. So that means a lot of trouble. To the inhabitants of the earth. Yeah, no kidding, right? Woe to them. By reason, there's a reason why. Of the other voices of the trumpet. Look, they're at the fourth one at verse 12 and 13. Of the voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. We're at the fourth trumpet here. When we come to this heavens darkened, what's going on is that while the heavens are darkened, everyone's like saying, where's light? Where's light? Everything is dark. All of a sudden, a boom comes out of heaven from the angel, and he says to them, three more to come, yeah. as if that wasn't scary enough. Right. Imagine you're in the middle of the dark. You ever hate those horror movies where everything is dark, and all of a sudden they put these scary noises at the end, bam, or all of a sudden like that, like, ah, like that? They do that deliberately, you know. I think that's a cheap trick to scare audiences, you know. I mean, there's, a, there's more genius ways to do it, you know. But anyways, aside from that, it's like a real thing. They're all groveling in the dark. It's all dark. And all of a sudden, you hear this noise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Three more scary things are about to happen. Get ready. That brings up a lot of terror, doesn't it? Amen. All right, let's look at the other three. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Verse 1, and the fifth angel sounded. Now we come to the fifth trumpet, the fifth angel sounding. Look at this. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Oh, that's the same thing like wormwood, right? No, this is something different. Look at this. This star falls from heaven to the earth. And to what? Yeah. Him was given the key of the bottomless pit. This being is a star, is a person. This star is a person, and he has the key to the bottomless pit. All right, so I'm going to give something that some people are not going to be happy with online, but uh, this is, uh, you'll notice then that if you look at verse 10 and verse, chapter 9, verse 1, this is proof then that stars are different from angels, and angels can be assimilated with stars. So there are some people online who think that these stars are actually, uh, they're actually representing angels. They're not real things. But no, those stars are real objects if you look at ch chapter 8, verse 10, right? Yeah. That's a real thing. That's a real object. And that ain't an angel. That ain't a person. Yeah. And then chapter 9, verse 1, it shows that a star can be assimilated with an angel. Yeah. See that? So those are two things you want to know because... Two different crowds don't believe in that. Yeah. There's this one crowd who make a big deal about flat earth, and I've been getting constant materials you know, on the mail concerning that. And then these people, what they're going to say about the stars is that because they believe NASA is the enemy, you know, rather than Satan and hell itself, you know, it has to be only NASA and the gospel is only flat earth. Now, I'm not denying their arguments either, okay? I'm all for truth, all right? I told you my position. My position concerning that kind of topic is there's so much material out there. So I can only go by the material that matches with Scripture concerning some of their arguments. And other stuff, I have to say that doesn't make sense and doesn't fit with Scripture. Right. So that's my position. So I'm going to be honest and not lie to you. So here's one of my honest points, and I'm not going to lie to you. This doesn't fit in with some of the flat earthers who believe yeah. on this one. See? So then you're going to notice right here that this one is a literal solid object concerning about stars at chapter 8. And then chapter 9, you got this other crowd from the fundamentalist independent Baptists and some of them who believe in the post-tribulation rapture. And they don't believe that fallen angels or the angels are represented as the morning stars or the stars. No, they are. This is an angel. By the way, did you, uh, you did not pay attention. We don't have to read it. Revelation 1 and 2. Didn't we read about the stars? Yep. Yeah. And the stars, each star is the church, yeah. and each, represent, uh, each, represent, each representation of the church, which is a star, is a what? Angel. An angel. Yeah. All right? Job is even more plain. It says, the morning stars and sons of God shouted for joy. They're the same. Why do you think Jesus said at the book of Matthew, we're going to be like the angels of heaven when we resurrect? And 1 Corinthians 15 says when we're resurrected, our stars 
are, are, are br um, we have different brightening stars. Yeah, different See, look at that. So, I mean, this is all scripture right here. Okay, let's go back to chapter 9. <clears throat> all right, let's look at the horror now. So, he gets, this angel gets the key of the bottomless pit. Okay, what's he going to do, right? Dun, dun, dun. This guy comes down, falls down out of heaven, and then when he falls down out of heaven, he comes down like Superman, and then he has the key to the bottomless pit. So notice right here that the bottom, so then it's bottomless. Now some people might laugh at the Bible saying, oh, you're talking about, there's no such thing as a bottomless pit. No. You evolution scientists believe that the earth is round and that it rotates. Yep. Think about that. If you really believe in that, then think about that if you look at a circle, it has no bottom. See? It's all just sides. It's in a circular pattern. Imagine falling into that void. And then if you sci evolution scientists believe that the earth is rotating, imagine how it would go like this at a circle, uh -huh. and that's like bottomless. That's a nightmare. Yeah. All right? So don't laugh at the Bible. Laugh at yourself. Amen. The Bible is much more enlightening than you scientists think. Amen. It shows you a deeper truth than a lot of you scientists overlook. Whatever scientists see as a problem in Scripture, you notice every single time it's a deeper insight. Yep. Okay. Verse 2, and he opened the bottomless pit. Uh-oh, what's going to come out of the center of the earth? Which is hell then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Why? Because hell has smoke. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up day and night forever and ever. Revelation 14. As the smoke of a great furnace. Well, that's plainly hell. Yep. And the sun and the air were darkened. Look at that. The sun and the air is completely darkened by the smoke that comes out of hell. By reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay, so because of the smoke coming out of hell, it darkens the skies. Here it gets wild. Verse 3. And there came out the smoke. Look what comes out of hell. Demons. Locusts upon the earth. No, it's just a locust, Pastor. <laughs> Ain't no locust, man. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Look at that. So then they have a poison in their tail like scorpions, these locusts. Hey, this ain't your normal locusts. This is more like monsters coming out of hell, demons. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. So these particular locusts do not hurt the vegetation. So similar with Moses' plague in Egypt, but much more extreme. The locusts, they ate up all the grassland of Egypt. In the tribulation, they don't eat the grassland. They are going to injure people. Look at this. Uh, nor hurt the grass of the earth. See that? They're environmentalists. These, these demons are very good environmentalists. If you want to talk about liberal environmentalists, then show them uh, Revelation 9-4, you know? There's a lot of good devils that are environmentalists too. All right. Anyway, I made some people angry. Okay. All right. Let's now. Let now. Let's go. Let's look back at verse four. Neither any green thing. See, they're all about green. See, they're all about green. These are very good environmentalists. Neither any tree, but only those men, which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So the people who God did not seal. These are unbelievers, lost people. These devils are going to injure them. How about that? This is crazy stuff. Okay, so he comes down. Let's loose out the bombless pit. Now the bombless pit comes out a horde right here of devils, and God knows how horrifying these creatures are. And these creatures come out of nowhere, and they start to injure the people over and over and over again. And they're injuring the unbelievers. Now, there's something very interesting here that you're going to notice with these plagues. Is that, um, if you recall, if God is imitating uh, the same things that he did with Moses and the plagues of Egypt, you'll notice that God's children were not harmed Amen. by the plagues. Right. If we're going to go by that logic, when the people could not drink water, this would make sense with we got to look at these verses, and we got to look at Mark 16 and the book of Matthew 24. 
Mark 16, Matthew 24. So then what's going to happen with God's children during the tribulation? What happens to them is that you'll notice that they're not the ones who are injured by the locusts, just like the children of Israel at Moses' time. Um, you'll notice that Mark 16, God gave a promise about the gospel being preached where they can drink, where they can drink things and it will not harm them. Look at this. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And the charismatics go all over the floor thinking that applies to them today, but that's not true. This is applying to tribulation. Keep reading. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink what? Any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Did you read that? So you'll notice that during the first trumpets that are going off, when the people can't drink their water, then what happens? The tribulation saints get away with it. They're healed. They can drink it, and it's not going to hurt them. Let's look at Matthew 24. But this is referring to the gospel. If you read Mark 16, verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Right? So a lot of people are going to say, well, that's referring to New Testament Christianity. No, you're only looking at a half-truth, all right? There's only a half-truth to that. The other part of the truth that you're overlooking is that it's referring to a tribulation application of the gospel of the kingdom being preached all over the world yeah. with these Jewish signs and wonders following them. Amen. God's signs were for the Jews, the nation of Israel. All right, first sign ever recorded in the Bible was to Moses for the Jews, the book of Exodus. The tribulation is a timeline not for the Christian church, but what? Jewish. See? Now look at Matthew 24. Look at verse 13. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Well, that's tribulation. We know that, right? Yeah. But look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom, see this tribulation gospel, Look how this matches with Mark 16. Uh, Mark 16. Look how it matches with Mark 16. Shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. See that right there? See that? It matches scripture with scripture. Look at verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. See that? It's all talking about tribulation right here. Tribulation application. So this gospel, okay, now let's go back to Revelation. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm past the time. I got to end it right here. Okay. So we will cover, uh, we'll continue our story about these monstrous locusts, which will be very interesting. And an even more interesting one when the sixth angel sounds off what that is. All right. It's going to be intensely interesting. I was hoping I'd cover that today, but we don't have time. All right. Let's end it here.